I've heard amazing stories and testimony um, in the, over many years about the work of the Warrington Peace Centre, so it's been brilliant to actually see it firsthand today and to talk about the work they do on preventing conflict and on conflict resolution, but also the unprecedented and unparalleled support that they provide for survivors of terrorism dating right back to the Troubles, but also um, dealing with uh, far-right activity, with Islamist terrorism. Um, it is absolutely um, un unprecedented, the work that they do here um, in providing that wraparound support for victims. Um, and it's quite clear that the government has relied heavily on them in the past, particularly when horrific events like the Manchester bombing um, occurred and the Home Office was based here for six months in providing that support for victims. So um, it's uh, really inspiring to see that happen and to hear that testimony about what they can do for victims of terrorism. I know figures here are obviously continuing to press the Prime Minister over that funding, but do you have faith in the government and the Prime Minister that it will be secured? It's um, really quite horrifying um, that they have been having to be funded by a philanthropist and um, by charity for the last few months and that funding is only guaranteed up till the end of September so they have not been receiving government money for several months now and the future of the work that they have been doing here has been incredibly insecure. Um, clearly many Tory politicians turned up during the general election and made promises that it seems like they knew they weren't going to keep. I'm really really hopeful that they are successful in their funding bid but quite frankly what the government needs to do now is pause that funding um, tender, secure the support that victims of terrorism have been having here and make sure that the future of this really important work is, uh, is safe. And have you discussed the peerage um, offer to Claire Fox here yeah, today? That's obviously caused a lot of insults to people in the town. Absolutely. It's quite clear that the appointment of Claire Fox to the House of Lords has caused real hurt. Um, people like Colin Parry, who is normally you know, not someone who gets really heavily involved in, uh, in, in politics and in calling people out, to, to call out the Prime Minister in the way that he has and to express his utter horror at the appointment of someone who has refused to apologise for effectively defending the Warrington bombings is disgusting. And when they are not providing the security and funding and future of this centre, it's a real double kick in the teeth for the people of Warrington. The Tories have accused Labour of, I mean, hypocrisy. They've claimed, you know, Jeremy Corbyn didn't fully condemn violence from the IRA. Have they got a point, the Conservatives? Well, Jeremy Corbyn um, was asked repeatedly under his time as leader about condemning violence in Northern Ireland, and he always did so. But, you know, I personally have not always um, agreed with everything Jeremy Corbyn said in the past. His, his comments in the past were completely wrong, and the Labour Party's under new management now. What the question for Boris Johnson is why is he uh, appointing someone who refused? to apologise for defending the Warrington bombings and is now standing in the way of funding for the Peace Centre in Warrington. He has the power to stop Claire Fox's appointment and to secure the funding of this Peace Centre. Why is he doing neither? And just to finish, do you think Labour's in a much stronger position now with Keir Starmer in charge? Uh, I'm delighted to serve as uh, Keir Starmer's Shadow Northern Ireland Secretary. Um, I think we've been holding the government effectively to account over, over the shambolic handling of, uh, of the lockdown and of the response to the COVID pandemic. I'm really hopeful that we'll see some uh, election gains in the local elections here in Warrington next May.